Here we're going to be talking about doing the best you can, setting the marginal rate of substitution equal to the marginal rate of transformation. So this is all about Keiko's constrained maximization problem. Okay, so thinking about that, what do we have to do? We have to recall that problem. Keiko is choosing between living and learning. And her living is defined as follows. It's equal to 16 hours minus the hours that she spends studying. So 24 hours in the day minus 8 hours for sleep, leaving her with 16 hours, which she can spend either on learning or on studying. Studying produces learning. So her cobb douglas utility function is uxy equal to x to the power 0 0.4 times y to the power 0 0.6, where x is living and y is learning. This means that her marginal rate of substitution is equal to two-thirds y over x. Now, you'll notice this is a different one to what we saw in the previous video. Um, now, that was because in the previous video, we assumed um, alpha equals 0 0.3, and that was to do a different example to the one in the textbook. Here, we're going to return to the example in the textbook. If you're not sure how to find that um, MRS um, xy equal to two-thirds um, y over x, then I'd say take this utility function and go and do it as a practice to find what the marginal rate of substitution will be. What you'll see there is that you can get two-thirds y over x as the MRS. Okay, um, now we assume her feasible frontier is given by the following equation. That's equal to y equal to 4 minus 1 over 64 x squared. So this comes from the production function for um, uh, studying into learning. You can find that in the math note in the textbook. But this is her feasible frontier in terms of um, living and um, learning. Okay, so here we have a feasible frontier and we have our indifference map with three different indifference curves, um, one, two, and three. So we can combine Keiko's feasible frontier and her indifference curves to understand her constrained utility maximizing choice. Her preferences are represented by her indifference curves and she will prefer the bundle with the highest utility. Her constraint is that she can only choose a bundle within her feasible frontier. So she has to choose something either on the frontier itself or um, within the other the remains of the feasible set. So the feasible frontier is the dark green line and the indifference curves are given by um, U1K, U2K and U3A, U3K. So those should be all indexed K, K and K here. Sorry, there's a little typo there. Now, when thinking about that, um, we can say <clears throat> that she will maximize her utility where her marginal rate of substitution equals her marginal rate of transformation, MRS XY equals MRT XY. And that will happen where the slopes of the two are equal to each other. Now, um, we can see that happening in the figure here at point B. So the slope of her indifference curve is equal to the slope of her feasible frontier. Now remember, the marginal rate of transformation is equal to the negative of the slope of the feasible frontier. The marginal rate of substitution is equal to the negative of the slope of the indifference curve. Therefore, at her utility maximum, she will reach a point where MRS equals MRT, where the slopes of the two are equal to each other. Okay, so to recap, the utility maximizing output bundle is a point where the slope of a feasible frontier equals the slope of the indifference curve, which is where the marginal rate of transformation equals the marginal rate of substitution, which is where her opportunity cost of x in terms of y is equal to her willingness to pay for x in terms of y. So just to review, when we look at this figure again, at point B, what are we seeing there? With her marginal rate of substitution equal to her marginal rate of transformation, her willingness to pay in terms of her preferences, what she likes, what she is personally willing to give up, um, that is going to be equal to her marginal rate of transformation, what she is constrained to give up in terms of the opportunity cost of um, x in terms of y. Now, notice, if we look at points A and C, <clears throat> they are not utility maximizing. Why is that the case? Well, at point A, we see that the indifference curve is what? It's steep. That means there is a high marginal rate of um, sub, uh, a high marginal rate of transformation. So if we look at point A, that means steep slope. Therefore, um, high MRS. Now, what's true of the um, feasible frontier at that point? The MRT, um, the feasible frontier, has a relatively flat slope. Therefore, the MRT um, is low. So MRS and MRT are not equal to each other at that point. She's willing to trade, she's willing to pay some Y to get more X. 
Now we have the opposite being true at point C. At point C, she has a um, flat slope for her indifference curve and a steep slope for her feasible frontier. Now what does that mean? It means that her opportunity cost of X in terms of Y is high, but her trade-offs or her willingness to pay in terms of, of Y for X is low. So again, at C, the MRT is not equal to the MRS. At point B, the slopes are equal, the marginal rate of substitution is equal to marginal rate of transformation, her willingness to pay is equal to her opportunity cost. Now, thinking about this, let's try and think about a mathematical example. So we've already said that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to 2 thirds y over x. Now we know that her feasible frontier, y as a function of x, is equal to 4 minus 1 over 64 x squared. Now remember that the marginal rate of transformation is equal to minus dy dx of the feasible frontier. So mrt equals minus dy dx um, of this function. And what can we see that is? That's going to be equal to what? 1 over 32 times x. Okay, that's just applying the power rule. So what do we have to do now? We now have to set mrs equals to mrt. mrs is equal to 2 over 3 y over x equal to 1 over 32 times x, and that's equals the MRT. Okay, so that's what we see here. MRS equals MRT. Now what are we going to do? We're going to isolate one of these terms. We're going to isolate y and find an equation for y in terms of x. So we're going to multiply through by x, and then we're also going to multiply through by 3 over 2. Okay, so what does that leave us with? Um, it leaves us with y equal to um, 3 over 2 times 1 over 32 x x. What's that? That's equal to 3 over 64 x squared. Now here's the thing. What can we do with this thing to isolate x? We found a relationship between y and x. We said y is equal to 3 over 64 x squared. Now, where else does y appear? Well, notice what we have over here. We have up here an appearance of y. So what can we do? We can write this out as a new equation. We have 3 over 64x squared is equal to 4 minus 1 over 64x squared. And so that's how we're going to proceed. What does that leave us with? That leaves us with um, adding... 1 over 64x squared to both sides. So that's going to give us 4 over 64x squared equal to 4. Now what do we have to do here? Well, um, I can just multiply through by 64 over 4. That's going to leave us with x squared on the, on the um, left-hand side. So if I do that, that means that I've got x squared equals 64. Four. Now, let's think about this. X is defined as the amount of hours of living. If we're going to have to square this number, that means we have to have a positive square root. We can't deal with a negative square root. We can't have negative hours. So this means that I can find X equal to the square root of 64 in terms of the positive root, and that is equal to 8, because 8 squared is equal to 64. So um, from this, we found our value for X x is equal to 8. Now what's the next thing that we know? We can take this value for x and substitute it back into the condition that we found. Because y, well, that allows us to find y. So we know that y is equal to 3 over 64 times um, x squared. What's x? x is 8 and x squared is 64. So that means y is equal to 3. So y equal to 3 and x equal to 8, that is her constrained utility maximum. That's what we found here by setting MRS equal to MRT.